with the ball down six, 41-35, two minutes into the second half. Watch how Hatton keeps this dribble alive, even with somebody that does a head, Johnny. So the Wisconsin Badgers continue to lead St. John's 41-35, 7.52 to play in the second half. One other game to report to you in the first round, West Bracket action, Cincinnati 54-22 over the Terriers of Boston University. We thank you for joining us on Singular at the Half. We'll return you to Chicago for the second half right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. As the fact that they're not turning the ball over, only had three turnovers in the first half. And that's something that St. John's counts on, creating a turnover that could turn into some offense for them. And that rebound snagged by Devin Harris. So Wisconsin saw the first minute really go St. John's way here in the second half. And now a little five-point run for the Badgers has them up eight. Stanley on Penny. Penny has been kind of quiet in terms of getting himself in position to score. There he is, posted up nicely inside. It's the Very whistle. Nice. Just rattles out. Two for Penny coming. There's where you're talking about, Jim, as Penny has built himself up to be much stronger in the low post than he was in his first two years. Kirk Penny draws the third foul on Stanley. Penny three times this year was the Big Ten Player of the Week. Two times he was co-player, but three times. That's quite an honor, good consistency in the league that had a lot of fine basketball players. Jere Fordham in for the Red Storm. Two, two 30 point games, 33 against Marquette, a team that probably played as good a team defense as anybody in the United States. One of two for Penny. Nine point lead, Wisconsin. And a nine against a team like St. John's is like a 15 point lead against a team that has firepower from numerous sources. Nice Look job by Mater. Steele. Mater denying the pass. Coming up with the theft. It's a serious time right now for St. John's. You can just feel this game getting away from him. Owens. Oh, they're going to call that as a goaltend? Count the basket. Wow, I did not see that. And Mike Jarvis is livid on the opposite side. Let's take a look right here if that ball was tapped at all. Well, the net was touched. Well, but the ball has to be, you can touch the net. The ball has got to be in the cylinder area, in the basket area, for that to be a factor. That should not have been two points. Eight-nothing run now by Wisconsin, matching the largest lead of the game. Good play by Glover. Roy, is that an important two points for St. John's? The game was getting away from him here. Breaks the Badger streak. And Wills doesn't want to have that ball in this area. No siree. And Wills, after having it taken away, commits the foul. It's kind of amazing, Jim, that you can tell when guys have the ball at the wrong place at the wrong time. If Wills would have stopped his dribble on, on the side of half court and not gotten over, he wouldn't have put himself in a position to have it stolen. 46-37 Wisconsin. Boom. Yeah, that left eye, the concern. Billy Collins, Kevin Fitzgerald, Bell, Seymour, and Ryan Buttom for, for Boston University. This is Paul Seymour. Little leaner, not there. Steps. One of the few mistakes they made, yeah, huh? Not just, many. Just didn't come down with balance. Done a little. Bob Huggins has turned. He's he's kind of casual. Huggins has turned around. He's addressing the crowd after after the steps were taken. Cincinnati fans sitting right behind the Bearcat bench. They're one of those teams that travels well, Cincinnati. Good following. Because he, uh, not coaching as though it's a close game, because you might see a little more of a tirade over there. Uh, but nevertheless, 
wants some things to go his way. 58-24. McElroy, Little, Maxiel, Logan. At the 14-minute mark. There's Maxiel with a turnaround. Not shooting that quite the way I saw him early in the year. A little bit of a line drive. He mentioned he short armed or straight armed one earlier. Billy Collins with a bit of a wry look as the ball will be inbounded now by Cincinnati. Seymour out. Kevin Fitzgerald. Jazz Carr is back on the floor. Back in the lineup, Max Eel. Rebound Rashad Bell. Here comes Boston University. Collins with the jumper. Nice. Got it. Yeah, they need something, huh? Just keep plugging away. 12 points for Billy. So Wisconsin with a 46-37 lead on St. John's. Plenty of time remaining in the second half. In Chicago, Southern Illinois and Texas Tech getting underway in the second half. 32-29. Saluki's in the lead. Let's take you there and join Tim Brando and Eddie Fogler. Three-point game. Southern Illinois dominant in the first half, but not knocking down enough shots. Only lead by three. But defensively, they've really taken the game to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Dearman with a jump stop. Well defended by Valdez. Too strong, pulled down by Andre Emmett. You see the story, Powell with 10, Williams with 9. Going back to the point we were making about Kent Williams, number 33 for the Salukis. You see Powell make his move. Stays with it, Dearman clears. Kent William, Williams reminds me of sort of a Joe Hillman, Dan Dock Dockage type of player. Guys that were favorites for night back in Indiana. Nice, high-low pass, Dearman to Roberts. Only a minute into the second half, and the largest lead of the game for the Salukis of five. Valdez running the curl, gets it out to Emmett. Emmett's a streaky shooter. At any time in the game, he can begin to light you up. Moments ago, our Charles Davis spoke with Bob Knight coming out of the locker room. Coach, you had Kasim Powell had 10 points in the first half. Looked like he's working well inside. Any adjustments off your motion offense to get him more touches? Well, what I th what has impressed me most is how hard the Southern Illinois kids have played. I think they've just played harder than we have, and I think that's the biggest difference right now. Thank you, Coach. Underneath, and the foul will go against Ellis. You see the quickness and the size disadvantage turned into an advantage. That first and second step, very impressive. So SIU's lead with 18-27 to play in regulation, 34-29 over Texas Tech. One other score to tell you about in Pittsburgh, top seed Cincinnati looking every bit the top seed in the West, 67-27 over Boston University. Thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. Back to Dallas for the second half of Mississippi State and McNeese State after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. It's a shopping cart and make sure he gets the candy bars and whatnot to make sure the team is well fed and uh, helps clear the baggage off the conveyor belt at the airports. Very humble man, Bruce Weber. Valdez, a runner, wave it off. Ellis inside the cylinder, and that will get Knight off the bench. Nice curl cut, easy basket. Here we go, we watch the curl cut by Valdez. He comes off the curl to the basket, misses a fairly easy shot. Ellis over the hoop, close call. I thought it was a good basket. I agree with Knight. I think he's got a case. Finger roll does not go. Dearman on the offensive boards. Loose ball collected by Valdez. Southern Illinois much quicker to the rebounds than Texas Tech here today. Chavis starting the second half as Mikey Marshall on the floor and there's Kasip Powell. Too strong, that shot's got to fall for Texas Tech. Williams, oh, what a pass, what a pass! 
Give him the hoop. But Williams the dish. Drive, dish, and deliver. Pitt and NC State, first tournament wins in 11 years, but your big surprise of the tournament thus far, Billy? Well, the only 13 seed to win, UNC Wilmington, and that's their first win ever, considering it was against Southern Cal, a team that we thought could potentially even be a Final Four squad. But more importantly, I think winning that game after you were tied up by the superior team, or at least superior team in bracketing, and then be able to go ahead and win in overtime, I think was pretty impressive for Jerry Rainwhite's club. Yeah, the way they were able to rebound after letting go of a big and lead, see the key, Trojans tie it late in regulation. Key player out in fouls, yep. five fouls, uh, just a terrific job. USC got caught looking ahead, not one game, but two games to a Sweet 16 matchup with Duke. We have seen that before. Five on the shot clock, traveling first, though. And here again, with Bader down in the low post, Wisconsin does not want to throw it down in there to him. They really have no low post threat in the game right now. Only the fourth turnover by the Badgers. Near the conclusion of every tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most viable player from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. St. John's trying to cut into that nine-point deficit with 13.40 to go. And, Jim, that's really an incredible job to not turn the ball over against St. John's. They forced their opponents to turn it over 587 times this year. So that has been the key to their success. Wisconsin's handled it nicely. Hatton gave it up. Good pass. Glover cutting down the lane. But I really think Mater, although he's getting in some minutes for Wisconsin, Wisconsin's a better team when he's not on the floor because they do have, with Wills, a, an offensive threat. Third foul on Mater. Seventh team foul on Wisconsin. Mater is starter and averaging 14 minutes a game, but only three points a game. So you can see he's in there basically to play some defense, get some rebounds, be involved in the spacing. Two shots for Glover. Here comes Wills for Mater. We ought to point out, too, in regard to St. John's shortcomings in regard to scoring, Willie Shaw, who was ruled ineligible for not only this game, but any further games that they would play the rest of the year. And I think that it was interesting to hear Mike Jarvis say, but I think he'll have two good seasons remaining in his career at St. John's, meaning that it was not a suspension for life. And hopefully Willie, whatever the case may be in terms of the suspension, gets his act back together because Mike Jarvis is a real quality gentleman to play for. He's suspended for the rest of the tournament player who was their fourth leading scorer. Well, Wills basically intercepted that ball for St. John's because Wilkerson was the man it was intended for, and he was wide open for a layup. Jumper, not this time. Glover saves it baseline. And, one. and that was against the taller man. Just a power move by Glover. This is some offensive put back by Glover. Goes right up over the top of Wills. Uses his chest to ward him off. Gets the basket and goes to the line. St. John's hanging right. Tipped around, saved by St. John's. Well, Davis, although he never did get a clean rebound, has been in the center of the traffic and just shocking bodies to keep the ball alive. A lot of action, no points. King will go to the line. Eric King for St. John's. They've been down 11 a couple of times. Stanley, who basically just keeps the ball alive, gets it back in Hatton's hands, plays good defense, and the walk-on is part of a Big Ten team, a Big East team. One and one for King. We can bring this to a two-point game. 
Well, let's talk about this team. You know, they beat Wake Forest by 12. They beat a good Miami team. They beat Connecticut in overtime, 85-83. They beat Boston College, and they beat Notre Dame. So St. John's has some quality wins. They beat the press up ahead. Freddie Owens, Wilson, oh, wow. Now King made sure he didn't have a layup. Good that Wilkinson is okay. And, and what we have right here now is his coach is saying, Bo Ryan is saying, he was in the act of shooting, but watch this. It was a fake and he was not in the act of shooting when he got hit. He was pump faking and then brought the ball back down. So a good call by the official. Takes it hard on the back of the neck. Intensity being picked up here. Wilkinson drives and misses. Glover with the rebound. St. John's on an 11 2 run. Have a chance with a three to take a lead. Amazing. I really admire Hatton being under control in this second half, Jim. Not taking bad shots whatsoever. Yep, back pass. Back door. Owens read it. Race to the basket, and he'll shoot two. Owens, because of his leaping ability, not afraid to take it down to the glass. You Fourth on Stanley. There was the bounce pass, but it really wasn't there for King. Owens way ahead of it defensively. Using the right hand to get the shot off. No question about the foul. Again, four on Stanley and Freddie Owens, who contributes seven points a game off the bench. Had a good night here with ten. Oddly enough, he had been held scoreless in three of his last five games. Jim, them back in for Jim, and that, and that, Red Storm. In that first half, Stanley played 13 minutes, took no shots, had two rebounds, two personal fouls. So basically, he's uh, taking up space and keeping the ball alive. Wisconsin bench has outscored the St. John's bench 21 nothing. Andre Evan was able to put it down and get to the hole. If, if uh, Texas Tech's going to win here today, he's got to get going. He's got to get more touches and attack the glass, much like that possession. For Texas Tech, Andre Evan. Two shots. Bobby Knight's teams generally get to the line more than their opponents. They get uh, more free throws made than their opponents attempt. So certainly they need to live at the line in the second half, but it's been most difficult in tonight's game as you see Kent Williams making his way to the bench. Belcher back on the floor along with Darren Brooks just entering number one for the Salukis. Again, Southern Illinois depth has played very well here today. They look much more like a fresh team here. Andre Emmett is one for ten from the floor. He had better come out of the gates in the second half. Coming up after your late local news, it's the Late Show with Dave tonight. Patriot star Adam Vinatieri is going to kick footballs right off the roof of the Ed Sullivan Theater to a surprise receiver. And also Dave goes into the audience for who asked for it tonight on Dave. Did you negotiate his new contract? Uh, just, you you just, involved in that? Just for just a, a small percentage. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> 3930 Mississippi State over McNeese State now showing. They are going small, and small has been their best thing. Austin, the only big guy. Everybody else guards. Jump ball. Boy, Harper tied up. Chauncey Bryant. Bowers just scored that bucket again off of uh, backcourt pressure. Well, Harper and Bowers in. A Southern Illinois leading by 7, 43 to 36. 12, 48 remaining. Dearman has been a real problem for Texas Tech to match up with any time he gets the pass. He can beat you off the bounce. He's done it in a post-up situation. Right now, Andy Ellis has his hands full. There he is. A little double team action to help him that time. Corn from deep. Loose ball. 
Taken by Brooks in the fresh 35. Southern Illinois continuing to get loose balls, getting their hands on rebounds, coming up with extra possessions. Brooks. Oh, that in-between game, it's a lost art. Well, Tim, there's a red shirt freshman. More young men on a red shirt when they're not ready maturity-wise to play as true freshmen. He still has three years left after this year. That was a good move to red shirt his freshman year. Emmett still can't get one to drop. He's one for 11. Dearman again. Oh, oh, oh. Beating the Red Raiders down the floor. Just a step ahead. Largest lead of the night. 47-36. Bowie in the passing lane picks up the foul with ball denial against Kasip Powell. Southern Illinois foul number four by Rich Bowie. Here we see Brooks driving the baseline, pulling up the short mid-range game, knocks it down. And Dearman has been devastating. Timeout. Lewis running side to side with Zimmerman. But Nice State, Bob, with five turnovers this half. Mississippi State uh -huh. with this one as Zimmerman got baseline. That is a roll reversal right there. The second time they got a good backdoor play from Zimmerman. Austin to Zimmerman. Center to point guard. Now Zimmerman shook loose. Eight points. Well, he's athletic. No question. Around the basket moves very well. Under 14 minutes left, and Mississippi State pulling away up by 16. He is like lightning, Zimmerman. And the other thing about it is when you get a lead, the other team has to come and pressure you. And when they do that, you are susceptible to the backdoor cut. And they have used it very, very well in this game. Eldridge Lewis working hard against Zimmerman. Ball on the deck. Here it comes. Lewis against Gober floats it up and in. Count it. The little guy making plays. So Lewis with a chance for a three point play. 49 35 Mississippi State. And the foul whistled on Gober, his second. We have mass substitutions right here. Three players going out, three players coming in. Austin, of course, going to the bench has done yeoman's work at the offensive end. And the reason Stansberry's using lots of players tonight is because his pressure defense has been very successful. He wants to stay with it. And if you do it for long periods of time, you get tired, so you need new players in the game to maintain the intensity. Eldridge Lewis, a sophomore from New Orleans with his fifth point, three-point play. 49-36, 13-point lead for the Bulldogs. Well, Austin goes out, but Lincoln Smith is in. He's about 6'9", about 260 also. Timeout. We've got a timeout with 13-12 left. Second half here in Dallas, Mississippi State by 13. He needs to come back with Will Chavis, in my opinion. Ronald Ross, number 24, being dogged, almost turned it over there. But when Knight is disappointed in defense, you may sit and you may sit for a long, long while. And of course, Tim, they're coming off that 40-point loss to Kansas as well. Yeah, their confidence had to have been shaken somewhat. Although Bob Knight, uh, with time, there are many coaches out there that would love to have the knowledge to prepare a team after that kind of loss. I think he pretty much wanted it to end and end quickly and move on to the, the next game. The accomplishment of this team to go from nine wins to 23 is pretty incredible. And one would think they could dismiss that kind of loss because it was Kansas. Well, you would like to think so, but you never know how coaches and players react after blowouts. That's an unnecessary foul there by Texas Tech. They're getting more frustrated as each possession moves forward. Uh, Dalvin picked up his first. Hairston with a double pick high. Dump down to Roberts. Good things happen when he generally gets it there. Like that. 
49-36, the lead of Baker's Dozen for the Salukis. And the crowd from Carbondale and some from nearby Chicago getting behind their team. Texas Tech struggling to make passes against the Saluki pressure. Ross. Emmett, well, maybe that'll get him off the schneid. He gets a tip-in hoop. Just five points, only his second field goal of the night. We've hit the 10-minute mark for the second half. Oh, oh, oh. Dearman is just too good Jermaine, down there. Dearman. Jermaine Dearman doing it on both. Down. That looked like a tired shot for Emmett. Raising the front iron. Brooks. Uh, Roberts got caught slapping that one away. That'll be a foul. Mississippi State, if they advance, the two teams they're likely to play are not big teams. So his 6'9 body not vital against Texas or Boston College. Williams being chased down a wild race across midcourt. <laughs> Mississippi State has done a great job of keeping Fred Gentry out of the game. A little limp right here. Speed personified hustle. Goler picked up the foul, his third. NCAA tournament typical plays in this venue for these people going hard. Ball movement by McNeese State still with plenty of time for a comeback. 12:40 left, down 13. Williams got caught in the air and had to force it inside, and it was pushed away. He was looking for Gentry for help. Smith, too strong off the window. The Gentry has just not been able to get in the flow of this offense. He really hasn't. Not getting a lot of touches. The perimeter guys trying to do their bit. It is a balanced scoring team, and Eldridge has gotten some layups in transition. He tried to get one here, and good position defense by Gardner. Gardner slid over to help. First foul on Eldridge Lewis. Bowers will come back in for Mississippi State. Six points in this game out of Gulfport, Mississippi. You know, he was injured early this season in that opening game against Nickel State, missed three games, and then he took over the six-man role because uh, of the play of Ignerski. And, and the role has worked good. out well. Yes, absolutely, the role has been good. Bowers was the Mississippi High School Player of the Year. Many people think Darius Rice of the University of Miami was that, but Bowers beat him out for that honor. Miami losing to Missouri yesterday. Bowers inbounds in the easy layup. Bowers now eight points. Mississippi State's done a good job in this game on their inline out of bounds plays. They've got three baskets on those things, and that's very, very helpful. The lead is 15 for the Bulldogs. Under 12 minutes left. Anticipation. Watch how the Mississippi State players keep their feet. They very rarely leave their feet until the ball goes up. And that's a good example of it right there. Jackson may be surprised by that pass. Came in pretty heavy. He had his head turned around. Inside and a whistle. And that is a good example of a pump fake right there to get the defense to leave their feet. And you get an opportunity at the free throw line. Good shot blockers wait until the offensive man leaves his feet before they go. Gentry not known for his shot blocking, but is known for his aggressive play. Maintaining his attitude in this, a game where he's not getting many touches. Taking two shots, Bob. 0 for 2, picks up his second foul. Roller adds energy to this group. Makes the first. Big six conferences, 18 and 5. ACC, Big Ten, Big East, Big 12, Pac 10, and the SEC. Conference USA, Bob, 0 and 2. Well, so far. And tonight, Cincinnati having their way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They might carry it. They might carry that banner this year. Three number 12 seeds have advanced. That's also quite unusual in the same year. Lots of people complain about the Big Six conferences getting multiple teams in the tournament and then after the tournament everybody decides what happens watch how far Golar stands back on this free throw 
And the reason he does that is he, when he shoots from the free throw line where he should step, he gets long. He's long on that one, too. So instead of changing his form, he backs up. Well, they Not a bad idea. Yeah, the lane violation was on Gentry, so the troubles continue. Here comes Mississippi State. They break it down. A little touch back. Oh, the slam. Oh, the door. Maybe as close and quickly on McNeese State as Austin rattled the rim for his 24th point. Austin could not run the floor like this last year. Losing 30 pounds has made him a much, much better player. Check the man running in the middle of the floor. They're having some pretty good success, Ryan being one of those. And one uh, who is not tonight, Bob Knight, who falls in that category. Seems unusual to think about Bob Knight coaching his first team, but it's his first team at Texas Tech. At, boy, he is having all kinds of trouble in the second half. His second half shooting way off. He's 9 for 27 for the game. And 2 for 13 second half. Rough, rough no challenge whatsoever for Davis, who's down so low to the floor. Has to be a reach-in foul. Later tonight on CBS, coming up after your local news, stay tuned for the Emmy Award winning Late Show with David Letterman tonight, Adam Vinatieri. New England Patriots star kicker who won the Super Bowl for them. The kicking footballs off the roof of the Ed Sullivan Theater to a surprise receiver tonight on Late Show with David. Jim, just think last week we were at the Big Ten Championship. This Wisconsin team seated number one. That number one seed hasn't been too good in that big no. that tournament. You don't want it. Remember Luke Recker set Wisconsin home after one one game. Beautiful pass in wow. by Manuel right on the ground. Got it in there to cut just right where it had to be. Recker made uh, two game winning shots in a row there to have his Iowa team in a position to win another championship but it was not to be. That Recker beat Wisconsin. In the quarters, then Indiana at the buzzer in the semis. What a scene that was. Harris over in the corner just waiting for a reverse pass. Oh, good hands. Davis saved a turnover. Penny with the three. That's back to 11. Wisconsin really doing a good job with spacing on the perimeter there. And Harris has been waiting in the side. I'd say in the next possession or two, he's going to have a wide open jump shot. Manuel, he and you are going to draw the foul. Smart play by Manuel. Stepped right in and shot it anyway. Was you'd say it was a bad shot? No, the whole object there was to draw the foul. It's going to be a two-shot foul, though. Manuel was on the line. He was disgusted. He thought he was attempting a three. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Bench points, the two by cuff just a moment ago. The first two off the bench for the Red Storm tonight. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com. America Online, enter the keyword CBS Sports Line. Well, when you have an 11 point game in 19 deferential just on the bench alone, 21. 21, you can see the game. Oh, no, not a starter. starter, excuse me. Sorry, James. Good correction. Okay. It's only our third game. <laughs> it's your first mistake of the day. First one I've ever seen. Yeah, that's not a big one. Glover. Coming back. Hall. I mean, he was named Coach of the Year. TJ Sorrentine, the Player of the Year. Until he got it. Yep. The official uh, rule to the wrong people. But it was St. John's calling the timeout. Bo Ryan did not like the call at all. The official was pinned to the table. Let's see this. He's up in the air. You know, really, I don't think he should have got the timeout. His foot hit the ground before he got the call. It'll be St. John's ball down nine. Just win streak. They did in the country. And Tom Brennan was about eight feet tall. And <laughs> barking. He was chirping. Here's Maker. Crowd urging him to shoot. And Mahalik takes it away. With the feed. That's Jacob Kudlots of Glen Cove, New York. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Senior Billy Collins winds up his terrific career for the Terriers of Boston College with the double double 13 points and 10 rebounds. And Steve Logan, 23 points in the first half. And he is our Chevy MVP from Cincinnati. Here is Jacob Kudlots 
at the free throw line. Sophomore from Glen Cove, New York. Both of his parents members of the respective men's and women's Polish national team at one point. Ninety fifty two maker. Oh they wanted to shoot. Grove rejected maker. No. Chase down Lucas. Won't go. Final one. With 0.3 seconds left. Oh. <laughs> Save the whistle. Are you get Swallow oh. that puppy. Hey, both coaches would agree with you. Oh. Warm it up, Gus. <laughs> oh, dear. Flowers at the line. Now, you want to establish authority in the game. 0.3 to go, Flowers. <laughs> Misses. It's 90 to 52. Yeah, it's uh, time to go, right? Over. Game's over. Cincinnati, 31 and 3 for the year. Bob Huggins, Dennis Wolf, their respective teams. Cincinnati advances to take on either UCLA or Ole Miss. The opponent to be determined in the game that follows here in about 30 minutes right now. Back to New York. Here's Greg Gumbel. All right, Vern. So the Bearcats celebrate Bob Huggins' career win number 590 to 52 over the Terriers of Boston University in Washington, D.C. First round game in the East. Wisconsin and St. John's are in a timeout. It is a 69-59 Badgers lead. We will take you there and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer right after this. Player. Solid. Or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sportsline. By the way, that 18 is the number that Texas Tech averages per game. So it's been returned to sender when it comes to assists. This has been quite a performance so far for the Southern Illinois Salukis. Unselfish on the offensive end, tenacious on the defensive end, totally dominating Texas Tech. German's quickness again. Boy, in Valdez, you can really see the frustration. That's the tech foul, number 21, Will Chavis. picks up the foul. Dowdney will come in. 5.38 remaining. Number 12, Nathan Dowdney returns for Texas Tech. Marcus Belcher. Dearman at the line. For Southern Illinois. Eight double doubles on the year. There are times that Bruce Weber said that uh, he's too active, too quick. <laughs> well, tonight he's been just quick enough. Too quick for Texas Tech. Cassette Powell. Nice drive to the basket. Right past Kent Williams. Clearly, Powell is going to have to have a great last five and a half minutes for the Red Raiders to get back in it. Harrison, baseline taken away. When her daughter is ready for college, she'll. St. John's trails by 10. Maryland and Siena coming up from this site later tonight. Red Storm ball. They've really been down by, say, a 7 to 11 point range almost the entire second half. Well, with the exception of Hatton just lighting it up in the first half, he gets fouled and it goes. St. John's just doesn't have enough point production to make a game tight. Bo Ryan wondering how in the world did Hatton get down the lane with Penny on a non step out. Wills doesn't help. And Hatton the leading scorer and the only guy you know wants to take it one on one that's going to go and nobody from Wisconsin helped out Davis at all. Fourth on Davis. Hatton cannot finish the three point play and St. John's ball. Good job by Emmanuel. Went in between. Penny and Wills and was able to use his body to get the ball back. Wilkinson coming back for oh, Wisconsin. Yeah, Bo Ryan really upset right now with his ball club. He's in a position to have this game put away, and St. John's keeps hanging in there. You don't want Hatton to have that opportunity to beat you. He wants that ball right back. 
Manuel, three. He's lost his. He, Hatton has lost his sneaker, I believe. I think it's Hatton. Oh no, no, no! It's Owens who lost his sneaker. Gets to put it right, right back on. He was lucky; he didn't even have to tie it, Jim. Well, the slipper fits. Report pressure for the Badgers. The face. Good job by Stanley to get a piece of that ball. Wills, who has all kinds of problems in this part of the court, trying to handle it. Boy, Stanley just hustling. He's giving you a lot of heart. Not much in the way of stats. The young man is a walk-on, providing a lot of heart to the St. John's team. St. John's needs a basket on this trip. Down eight, three minutes to go. And step back three. Oh, yes. boy. Is yes. this amazing? We've got a five-point game here in Washington. Patton alone trying to shoot St. John's back into it. Don't want the iron unkind at this stage when you're getting freebies. Just what I was thinking, Coach Brando. <laughs> Seven of 14 tonight. The Salukis have missed six in a row at the strike. Gets that one. Timeout. 341 left. The old assistant getting it done for now. Arrow to the Badgers, leading by five. And next foul, well, it's going to be double bonus the rest of the way here. And there's the man that St. John's would like to have had that ball as Wills. They'd love to be able to trap him out in the full court area. Good reversal by Penny. Penny. Oh, it rattles out. Emmanuel snags it. And here's Hatton. 30 attempts so far on the night. Not all bad shots, not all good shots, but he knows he has to put them up. Emmanuel, he's hit two already. Not this time. Pretty good follow through by Emmanuel. Lover three. Back to the rim. Either one of those would oh, have cut it to two. I've got to question that shot, Jim. They had the full 35 seconds to work with again. Only down five. You don't need to take threes yet. Owens caught. And a whistle. Now that really ought to be a pass. I don't think Owens was trying to shoot that ball. That'll be it for King. He's going to get credit for a, for a shot attempt, so he'll go on the line for two. Fifth on King. Quiet night for King tonight. He's going to have to sit down. I think they'll go back with Cuff, or will they, or will they come for a little bit more defense? Coach Jarvis will bring his team over. Coach Jarvis took his St. John's team. A little practice this week for Mike Jarvis and the Red Storm over at the George Washington gym, where Jarvis was the head coach for eight years. Five years at Boston U. Boston U knocked out tonight by Cincinnati. Eight years at GW, so very familiar territory here for Jarvis. Coming back to the Washington area this week again, coming here where his daughter lives, and where she delivered Mike and Connie Jarvis's first grandchild, a little baby boy, just three nights ago. Mike won 152 games at GW in eight years, got to the Sweet 16 in 93. Had the uh, Red Storm just one game from the Final Four in 99, lost to Ohio State in the regional final, 77 74. Last year, a disappointing season for the team. So much stock put into the freshman point guard, Omar Cook. First to produce the 14 15 season. Yeah, that's the first losing season he has as a head coach in uh, Division I basketball. And went obviously nowhere with that losing record. Hatton. Doesn't get the roll and Wills. 140 to play with a seven point lead. Wisconsin with the ball. Three man trap right here and a foul. Harris going to go to the line. St. John's pulling out all the stops here. Three man trapping. If Harris could have got control of it, he had to have somebody open because 
two were guarding four or trying to on the other end. Double bonus again, so Harris to shoot two. 93 seconds remaining. 79% on the season. You know, Jim, what's really interesting with these matchups of the Power League type teams, it is the ultimate report card, isn't it? The NCAA tournament. You really yes. get so many matchups that uh, are in one and done situations. No way you can schedule your way through the NCAA tournament. So you get a real chance to see the strength of the various conferences, particularly when they send four to six representatives each. Harris two for two, Reese is the lead to nine. And John's had a couple of three point attempts when they were down five just a moment ago. Hatton hammered and a foul called on Harris. And when is the time in your life you would have thought that the Big East would have six teams in the NCAA tournament, but two of them would not be Syracuse and Georgetown? Wow. And that is something that uh, was almost an automatic a few years ago. And Villanova, too. Well, yeah, Villanova okay. as well. But in the, in the history of that outstanding league started by Dave Gavitt, Syracuse and Georgetown certainly are among the leaders of quality basketball programs. Puff comes in. Hatton 0 for 2 at the line. He set a Big East record this year. May. We'll have Georgia and Murray State, Siena, Maryland, Ole Miss, UCLA, Boston College, and Texas. Tell you, I think Ole Miss defensively. You talk about quickness such as the Salukis have, Rod Barnes' his team will guard you for 40 minutes as well. As hard as anybody in America, Southern Illinois needs to keep them in front. Nothing easy off the dribble. Powell in traffic, Ellis. Again, Ellis stays with it. Timeout, Texas Tech. 17 for Ellis, a two possession game with 103 remaining. Uh, Mr. Intensity still in it. The trucksters. Deacon Fish. They have the right to do that. I guess they have the right. Patton. And Penny pulls it down. Uh oh, that was the deciding one right there. Penny's rebound. Uh oh, he breaks away. Like a pullback up the middle. It's like Ron Dane. Hey, I'll tell you, down here, Wills is hurt, and I can't figure out what's wrong with him. It's something in his chest. He's caught. Craig Gumbel in New York. So under a minute to play, Wisconsin leading St. John's. Let's go back to Chicago, where Texas Tech is closing in on SIU. Tim Brando and Eddie Fogo. Tech, trailing by double digits much of this half, has made it a two-possession game late. And now they have extended the defense and the foul given. It'll go against Andy Ellis, who's had a big second half. It's been his work inside that's helped Bob Dyke's club Get to within inside, particularly of Jermaine Dearman and Roland Roberts. A real difference, and the guard play for Bruce Weber's club has really annoyed Texas Tech and Andre Emmett, who only has three field goals, and two of those were layups. See Kasip Powell coming into the game, replacing Ronald Ross for Texas Tech. Well, Belcher's free throw makes it a three possession game now. Again, Southern Illinois must stay solid defensively. No gambling. Keep Texas Tech in front of you. They've got to make a contested shot from the outside. In his career, Bruce Weber was 18 and 19, assisting Gene Cady against Knight when he was in Indiana. Down the shot, not there. Ellis on the glass and a reach-in foul against Southern Illinois. That one will go against Marcus Belcher. That's his third. Number two, Marcus Belcher. We talked about it at the very top. Each of an 11 seed would better understand how to defend the motion offense of Bob Knight than that man. In fact, he runs it in his offense as well. Well, and I'm sure his mentor, Gene Cady, is watching closely and very proud of the effort tonight by Bruce Weber's team. Very good, sub very good substitution. There's Bruce Weber's record uh, versus Indiana while he was an assistant at Purdue. 
outstanding. Excellent substitution here. Brooks comes in for Roberts. Brooks is a 78% foul shooter. Southern Illinois now has four guards in this game to ball handle against the pressure of Texas Tech. And the quick foul given up by Chavis. Again, a reminder about Southern Illinois. They're a very poor free throw shooting team, 62% as a club. But here again, Eddie, is the difference in the double bonus or bonus. Absolutely. Two shot foul. We're now situation substituting as Roberts comes, is going to come back in on the defensive end. Brooks at the foul line. He just came in for Roberts on the offensive end. 78% foul shooter. They put the ball in their best foul shooter's hands, perhaps besides Williams. You saw the end of the night for Chavis, his fifth foul. Two shots. Southern Illinois has struggled at the free throw line, particularly in the second half. But as you mentioned, getting Brooks in the game, very important. He's an all-conference MVP quarterback in high school and uh, a tremendous high school baseball player at Jennings High School in St. Louis, Missouri, Darren Brooks. Southern Illinois has their best defensive team on the court now, Tim. They might want to think about switching everything on the perimeter, not to give up the three-point shot. Three-point defense. Ross back in the game for Shevis. Finger roll won't go, but a foul underneath. See, that hurts. That's too quick. That doesn't take enough time off the clock. Southern Illinois' defense got beat off the dribble, and the clock didn't tick as much as Coach Weber would have liked it to. Brooks picking up the foul. Kent Williams will come in on the next dead ball with Ronald Ross at the line. Here we go, offense for defense substitutions. Anytime Southern Illinois has the ball, they're gonna have their best foul shooters on the court. If it's a dead ball, they're then gonna substitute their best defensive players for their offensive players who don't guard as well. He missed them both, but Ellis kept it alive. Downey throws it up. Dearman clears. And elbows go flying, and a foul spotted. Will go against the Red Raiders and Andre Emmett. It's pretty obvious. I think there were a lot of people, Eddie, that felt that Bob Knight would have a tremendous crowd, a Big Ten crowd on his side, enamored with the star and legendary coach. But clearly, the upstarts from Carbondale, only six hours away from Chicago, have become really the darling of the dance at nighttime here Absolutely. in Chicago. Creighton had him going this afternoon. What, what, what really interests me, Tim, both Creighton and Southern Illinois have played like they knew they were going to win. They were not in awe. They did not have any fear about coming into this tournament. And four first round losses. You know, I've always felt this way about those types of stats. You have to get there a lot to create those types. Bruce Weber and Southern Illinois beat Indiana this year. Absolutely. By the way, how good did they look? There's a turnover, double dribble against Emmick. Momentary lapse. He can't believe it. Here comes Corn back into the game. I tell you, he may have been a career assistant, but he was overdue for his opportunity as a head coach. And SIU begins to reign supreme here at the United Center. Any problem, Southern Illinois should use their timeouts. And that's needless fouling at this point, Tim. This game is over. Congratulations to Southern Illinois and Bruce Weber. Great win. Now, we touched on it earlier. All those years coaching against Knight, when Gene Cady was the head coach at Purdue, and remember, the Boilermakers had a few number one seeds especially in the 90s. Three times they won the Big Ten in succession. Well, I think Gene Cady is a perfect example of an outstanding coach with a terrific record. Over, he's withstood the test of time, yet he's never made it to the final four. Yeah, that's four. right. So many great coaches have never tasted the final four party. You mentioned they beat uh, Indiana earlier in the year, the Salukis. They beat them by 12. Nice work by Powell, counted in a foul. And again, Weber can't believe it. Last thing you want to do, stop the clock and give them a chance to get a free bucket. Here's Powell beating him off the dribble, using his left hand, getting across, and Roberts can't block it.
and B, they commit the foul to give up a three-point play. Two no-nos in one possession. Now, I don't know if he'll be picking up his bags on the conveyor belt uh, at the airport. I'm next. glad I'm sitting over here with you, Brando. <laughs> that drove me nuts. Pelcher <laughs> to inbounds. He has to call a timeout as Texas Tech picked up full court. 20.7 remaining. East State, especially this half. Mississippi State very good at running their stuff. You could expect some back court, uh, back door possibilities. You could expect some post ups on Mario Austin for him. Three point country, Bob at East State, four of 16 in this game. There was a nice cut by Patterson. He was open. Goaler didn't want to give him the basketball. Shot clock under 10. You know, the three keys that Rick Stansbury told us about this game defend, contain, contain, and rebound. They've done all three. They certainly have. And now they're making shots. They are making shots. They are tough to handle because they pass the ball to one another. They don't seem to care who gets the points as long as the team gets them. Well, that backcourt is Zimmerman and Patterson now combining. Players of the game are Jermaine Dearman from Southern Illinois. And I tell you, so much outside the box score he accomplished, particularly closing down Andre Emmett offensively. And Kasim Powell, who early in the game was really the only guy that could get anything accomplished off the dribble against this much quicker Saluki's team. Texas Tech full court pressure, trying to deny, come up with the steal. They ought to look for threes and take a timeout. And a push. Foul will go against Ellis. Got caught holding. The question has come up many, many times. Just what is a Saluki? What is a Saluki? Well, it's an Egyptian Greyhound, Eddie. I'm glad you asked. And this is the 50th anniversary of the Saluki. In addition, and it goes all the way back to biblical times. There was a drought in the 1800s in northern Illinois, and a lot of people came down because the land was more fertile in the southern portion of the state, and they began referring to it as Little Egypt. In the biblical times, people came down for better crops and more fertile soil. And uh, the oldest purebred dog in the world is a Saluki. Well, I'm glad I'm here today to learn that. Thank you very much for enlightening me, Thank Tim. You very much. I appreciate that. I'll tutor you more later. Okay. Doubt me from D. Knocks three down a three. Yet another Missouri Valley Conference team carving some new history. Bruce Weber's club will advance in this NCAA tournament. To go, 26 wins for Mississippi State. That tied the school record tonight. They're going to break it. They'll go 27 and 7, while McNeese State will drop down and finish the year at 21 and 9. And let's don't forget, this team went to the Final Four in 1996 at the Meadowlands, the last year that the Final Four was played in a non domed arena. Dante Jones, the star player on that Mississippi State team, and Eric Dampier. And later on tonight, game still ahead Ole Miss, UCLA, Siena, number one ranked Maryland in the East, Murray State, Georgia, and right here in Dallas. Boston College in Texas. That game will follow this one here. Both schools in Mississippi in the NCAA tournament this year. Rod Barnes's team, very solid defensively also. And UCLA, which one of the teams will show up? Well, the bench is clear. Both coaches uh, hoping to let players who don't get time on the floor have that tournament experience Bob absolutely and that is so wonderful for a basketball player to be able to play in the tournament at all and for those who don't are not says you know in that Ole Miss UCLA game that many will see I'm of the belief that the quickness of Ole Miss's defense is incredible but they really lack depth in their low post and if that Zurich once, if it becomes a half-court game and guys like Capono and Barnes and Gadzurik take over, then it becomes a mismatch the Bruins win. Well, for size and power, UCLA should dominate the game, but Ole Miss plays defense much like Southern Illinois. Right. They will get up into UCLA and make it very difficult for the Bruins to get good looks. Powell. Ellis.